Patrick is from Germany, and um, he's got a question about double bass pedals. And he's saying, uh, my problem at the moment is that I'm sort of okay with playing paradiddles and triplets with the hands and feet. Not perfect, but it's okay for now. But when I practice with music and I want to use it at the end of a song, can't get my left foot activated. Any good ideas? Um, this is totally normal, man. Your left foot just has a little bit of stage fright. And it's just not developed yet. You know, that's really all there is to that. You just got to keep working on it. But uh, one quick little um, thing that you can do to sort of help speed up the process of you getting over this problem. You know my favorite saying already, if you haven't heard it already. Repetition fixes everything. You know what I mean? So the best way to, to, um, to get used to doing something is to just do it few hundred times in a row. So one thing that you can do, whatever songs that you're trying to, uh, to play this lick or whatever little phrase you're trying to do at the end of it, one thing that you can do is uh, just take that little section, cut it out, and loop it. Just turn it into a drill. So find out the tempo of whatever song it is that you're playing. And that's easy enough to do. Just go over to the App Store. If you don't already have this on your phone, it's a really cool thing to, uh, to just keep handy. But just go to the App Store and just download any, any one of the free tap tempo apps. And just find out the tempo of the song and work with a metronome. If you can't work at that particular tempo yet, then just slow it down and work up to it. But yeah, just find out the, uh, the tempo of that song and whatever it is you're trying to do, just loop it. Just loop that little phrase and just do it over and over and over again until you get used to it. Like there's no, there's no crazy, tricky answer to this. You just, have, you just have to develop your, your left foot. As your left foot begins and continues to develop, whatever it is that you're trying to do, it's just gonna, it's just gonna become easier to do. So, um, so yeah, man, that's really the only, uh, the only answer to that is just continue to, to work on that left foot and get it up to speed. Another thing that you can try, which is going to sound a little bit weird, but a lot of times when we're trying to play licks that we've learned to actual music, we can get distracted by the song. Because while we're practicing the lick, we're doing it to a metronome, right? So we're just used to, we're just used to hearing that. So when we play it to music, for whatever reason, you freeze up a little bit and it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't quite work out. So one little mental little thing that you can do that actually works, it's, it's totally weird, but it works. Um, one thing you can do is just don't play to the song, just play to the tempo. And sometimes that can be the one little mental hump that you need to get over to play that lick successfully. So just humor me on this and give it a shot. While you're playing along to that song, ignore the song and just play to the tempo. And um, you'll find that, or you might find anyway, that all of a sudden that lick just got a little bit easier to play. So yeah, man, that's my simple advice. Give that a shot. I'm sure you'll be fine. Simon is from West London, England. Shout out to all my England viewers, man. I got a lot of y'all out there. Apparently, there's a whole bunch of people out there watching me from England. And that's like my favorite spot. I've always wanted to go. I got to make it out there sometime. He's got a really simple question about uh, the right foot when you're playing jazz. And it simply is, how busy should your right foot be whilst playing jazz? And I'm assuming you're asking this because... You've heard a lot of dudes talk about feathering the bass drum while you're swinging. I don't exactly know what the purpose is for doing that. Um, I guess it helps with the movement of the swing or something, or maybe it just kind of accentuates the, the pulse and, the, and the, or the beat or whatever. But, you know, 
I mean, if you talk to a jazz purist, they're probably going to say, yeah, you, you, you should probably do that. But I've never done it. I know plenty of drummers that don't do it. Um, one of the main reasons is because I'm just, I'm not a heel down player. I play heel up. And I've actually tried doing the whole feathering thing um, at one point, And I just found it distracting. Maybe it's just me. But, you know, maybe I'm just a rookie. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't do it. For me, it's just, it's just one of those small little drummer details that really don't make much difference to me. So as far as how active your, your right foot should be while you're swinging, um, I don't know. I mean, I guess I, I never really paid too much attention to my right foot. I do know that I use it mainly for accents and punctuation. It's not really active much at all other than that. So choice is yours, man. I mean, it, feathering the bass drum, it's not going to make you a better jazz player if you're not doing it. And uh, it's not going to make you any worse if you are doing it. Your left foot should be way busier than your right foot, for sure, because you're, you know, stomping out that two and four and you know, splashing accents or whatever. I mean, you can get really creative with your left foot while you're swinging. But honestly, man, your, your right foot doesn't need to be that active when, uh, when you're just swinging away the, the whole bebop stuff. Now, I don't know. I might have just upset a bunch of jazz players out there. But, I mean, the fact of the matter is, if you're just feathering the bass drum, you're not going to hear it anyways. You know, it's going to get lost in the mix. So I don't, I don't know if it's really going to affect your swing. If you're already playing your ride with confidence and your left foot with confidence and everything is, everything is moving along real nice, I don't know. I don't think it's that necessary. Pedro, or Pedro, is from Brazil. Shout out to all my Brazil drummers. And uh, he's got a question about brush technique. So, he's just saying, I've seen a lot of different videos from various drummers about brushes showing their technique, but I never saw a video where they show a good way to practice it. Could you show us some ways for practicing with brushes? Now, this is where I humble myself and tell you that my brush playing, I would say, at best, is pretty good. That being said, I can surely get done what I need to get done. Like I've, I have learned a couple of things, but as far as the basics go, I've never really gone too far beyond just the basic, you know, strokes of uh, using brushes. And that kind of stuff is all over the internet. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pass the ball on this, and I'm gonna refer you to dudes like. Peter Erskine, Jeff Hamilton, and especially a dude named Clayton Cameron. Clayton Cameron plays for uh, Tony Bennett. And he is easily one of the top five, top ten brush players on the planet. Just jump on YouTube and, uh, and just look up some instructional videos by those guys. I know Jeff Hamilton's got some good ones. Peter Erskine's definitely got some, uh, some cool tips on, uh, on brushes. Clayton's got a great video out. I don't know if it's still available on Hudson Music, but he's got a wicked video that I believe is called The Living Art of Brushes. It's probably one of the best brush videos out there. This guy's a master. Um, but I say if you learn the basic strokes, the basic swirls, taps, figure eight patterns, if you learn those, that's enough for you to, to get started. Once you learn those, then you have your foundation. From there, figure out whatever sound you want to make and then just figure out how to do it on the snare. Just move your brushes around until it makes that sound and you're good to go. So you don't have to overthink so much the technique aspect of it, you know, unless you want to be like a Steve Smith or, you know, one of those dudes. But uh, for me, man, like I honestly... Brush technique is probably the one thing I spend the least amount of time on when I'm playing. Because I just, I know how to get what I want to get out of my snare, and I've never really gone.
beyond that. So I mean, I know it sounds like I'm punking out on the answer, but I'm just being honest with you. Like I'm not a, I'm not a brush master. I don't even think I've made a video where I'm actually playing brushes, but um, but it's good. You know, my brush playing is is okay. But as far as instruction, I would definitely pass the ball to one of the uh, one of the more experienced drummers. So look those cats up. I mean, they, they got some good videos out there. They should be able to help you out. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, man, if you have brushes at home and you want to work on stuff, one, one answer that I can give you that I, have, I actually have done is I've just practiced the basic strokes that I practice with my sticks with brushes. So practice playing double strokes, single paradiddles, flams, um, and then along with those, just practice your, your super simple basic swirl patterns. There's the circle with the, um, with the left hand. There's the figure eight with both hands. And there's like a, you know, the various different swish tap exercises that, uh, that you can do. So, yeah, man, that's my basic answer to that. Look those up and try that approach, man. When you get a little bit used to those strokes and stuff, take JoJo's approach, man, and just try not to overthink it and, you know, sing some brush patterns in your head and just try to work them out on the snare. Thanks for all your questions. Send them to askbeatdown at gmail.com. We try to do this once a week. Like. Subscribe. See you in the next video.